loving God we call unto you and render unto you our highest reverence we sing hymns of praises unto thee Yahuwah we thank you so much for your continuous blessing upon thy people we thank you Yahuwah for our life and strength for your love and care and your continuous protection upon thy people, especially in times of hardships and difficulties, in times when we are weak, when we are sick, troubles and hardships. Yahuwah, you are always there for the rescue. You are always there to help thy people. Thank you so much, Yahweh, for all your great kindness. And now we come together. Yahuwah, we come here to study thy holy word. The holy commandments coming from thee. Kindly bless each and every one of us. Allow us to reach the real promise that you have given unto us. Allow us to continue to follow and obey all of your holy commandments. Allow us always to practice them in our daily lives. Kindly bless your son who will lead us in this worship service today. Kindly grant unto him the guidance, the wisdom, and the knowledge that he needs, as each and every one of us will be leading and receive these holy teachings, this worship service. Yahuwah, we thank you so much for being with us today. We feel your holy presence in, the, in our midst. Please continue to be with us. We thank you so much. For you have granted us hope. You have increased and strengthened our faith. You have given us peace of mind, love and joy. And we continue to proclaim your name, Yahuwah. Praises be unto thee. Yahushua, we come to you. Thanking you so much for all your love. Lord, all thy grace and mercy. We thank you for the things that you have done in our daily lives. We ask you now to please bring unto the Father 
all of our pleadings, all of our individual prayers. Forgive us for all the sins we have committed. And Yahuwah, we return unto you. We ask you now to please bless all of thy remnant few. Please accept each one of us. We ask you to kindly accept our humble offering. For all of this we ask with love. In the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Yahushua Hamasir. Amen. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, once again in this portion of our worship, we will study the words of God. And as we are always being reminded by these verses that is now flashing on your screen, we must pay attention to what we are about to hear and read because those were the words of our God. So always be reminded of all these instructions that every time we study, Pay attention to what we are studying. And not only just paying attention to it, try to remember every detail of what we have studied. Because according to what we can read on that verse, <clears throat> to remember them and to keep them, that is life and health to anyone who understands it. So as a believer, we believe that those words are true. If we want to live long in the land, and to live healthy in the land, we must make sure that we understand what God has to say. So the topic of our lesson today is the basis of Yahushua's faith. You know, there's something that we have in our minds and in our hearts. And that is the faith that we have about God, about what's going to happen to this world as we move on in our journey. Now, there, is, there must be a basis of that. Now, as Yahushians, we firmly believe in four unyielding principles that serve as the foundation of our faith. These unwavering truths provide us with a solid groundwork to cultivate our spiritual lives. So the first question we want to ask, to whom do we base our faith upon? Let us begin reading what is recorded in the scriptures. First John 4, 8, and then First Corinthians 1, 9 of Amplified. The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God, does not and never did know him. For God is love. He is the originator of love. And it is an enduring attribute of his nature. <clears throat> God is faithful. He is reliable, trustworthy, and ever true to his promise. He can be depended on. And through him, you were called into fellowship with his son, Yahushua the Christ, our Lord. So to whom do we base our faith upon? 
Well, our faith, beloved brethren, is grounded or based upon on the nature of our God, Yahuwah, which reflects his character. Now, what is God's character? Well, according to what we have read, God is love and faithful. Beloved brethren, we can have faith in God's love. Why? Because he embodies it. His faithfulness assures us that he will always be there for us. It's impossible for him to fail us. Why? Because it goes against his nature. Now, in addition to being loving and faithful, Yahuwah, according to what we can read, is just, he is capable, holy, and ever-present. Now, what are the ways in which a person or a Yahushian can develop a faith that is grounded in God? Let us read what the prophet says here in Hosea 4.6 and then 4.6.4-5. And this is what we can read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of my law, where I reveal my will. My people are destroyed because they don't know me. And it is all your fault. You, priest, for you yourselves refuse to know me. Therefore, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten my laws, I will forget to bless your children. Don't point your finger at someone else and try to pass the blame to him. Look, priest, I am pointing my finger at you. As a sentence for your crimes, your priest will stumble in broad daylight as well as in the night. And so will your false prophets too. And I will destroy your mother Israel. Beloved brethren, what are the ways in which a person can develop a faith that is grounded in, in God? Well, we must acquire knowledge of God's law and know who he is. Now, how can a person say he knows God if he don't even know his name? Now, who is the first one to have knowledge of God and his laws? The scripture says the priests or spiritual leaders, ministers in our time. Amongst God's people, the ministers are supposed to be the ones to have knowledge of God and his laws. Now, what mistake did those priests commit in the past? But the scripture says they have forgotten God's laws. They have failed in their mission. What was their mission? Bringing God to the people by teaching them the law of the Lord. Let us keep in mind that the goal is to bring God to the people rather than priests or ministers or religious leaders or if you call yourselves there's somebody call himself as tagapamahalang pangkalahatan. We will go back to that again. Or executive minister. Leaders bringing them to the people. You know, they are bringing themselves to the people. Right? That's the, 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 the mistake that these people have made. The priest and the people of Israel were unable to fulfill their mission of spreading God's teachings. And as a consequence... They were destroyed. You see, the iglesia was destroyed. The reputation was destroyed. You may patch it up as you can, but in history, it was already destroyed. Whether you like it, whether you want it or not, it was already destroyed. You go to somebody, that history that, uh, that happened in the 100 years of the iglesia de Cristo will stay there, a sustain. To that organization. Brothers and sisters, it is crucial that we strive to fully understand and embrace God's teachings and instructions. God should be brought to you and to me. Preachers should do that. Bring God to the people, not you as a preacher bringing yourself to the people. That's not how we 
base our faith upon. You know? We base our faith upon bringing God to the people, knowing God, knowing his name, knowing his laws. Now, how can we ensure, beloved brothers and sisters, that the preacher is delivering God's pure message to us? How can we be sure of that? Let us read what the Apostle Paul told the early Christians or Yahushians in 1 Corinthians 2, 4 to 5. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, using clever rhetoric, but they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through me and of his power stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom and rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. Beloved brethren, how can we ensure that a preacher is delivering God's pure message to us? We have preached God's words, the Apostle Paul said, not through the clever rhetoric of men, but through the power of God. Hence, we must validate the authenticity of any preaching we receive from others by thoroughly investigating whether it aligns with God's teachings. Some people believe that being listed in their church registry is necessary to ensure our names are included in the book of life. While others claim it's important to register the church with the government. However, we should question whether these actions align with God's teachings and if they truly reflect what the verse states. And additionally, Beloved brethren, we should examine who is listed as the founder, the head, and the CEO in the register document. Is it the Christ or is it them? You see, remember, there is only one rep the representative of Yahuwah is the Christ, he is the only way to God. So he was the one who established the church. But if somebody will register the church and on that registration, it says they are the founder, they are the head, they are the CEO, it's no longer the Christ. Whether they explain it to you flamboyantly, oh, it's still the Christ. It is just a document. So you mean to say, brother, your document is a fake? Is that what you're saying? Or you lied to the government, which is also the, the people who were sent by God? See, it makes a contradictory thing, right? If we do it that way. So that's why I question it. Is that authentic? Is, is that really needed to do it? Now, when considering something, beloved brethren, it's important to question whether it aligns with God's teachings and whether it accurately reflects the verse in question. Like in Matthew 18, 18, they say, okay, this is the registration. The scripture is telling us to register you. If we bind you on earth, then you will be bound in heaven. What do they conclude about that verse, Matthew 18, 18? If we register you, if the administration register you on earth, then your name will be registered in the book of life. And if that administration, that's a person, delete you from the registry of the church, then your name will be deleted in the book of life. And it means you will not be saved anymore. Investigate that. Many people are so scared about that registration. Does it align with that teaching in that verse? It's not. We are telling you it's not because that's not about registration. That's why the verse says whatever. And then their conclusion is whomever. So it's a trick. Whoever did that will be punished by God. And in 28.18, what does it say? In 28.18, the Ahusha clearly stated that all authority in heaven and on earth was given to him. It was given to him. God gave him all the authority. Or in Tagalog, lahat ng kapamahalaan. Yahusha said, 
gave, given to me by my father. So the father gave him all authority. God gave him or Yahuwah gave him all kapamahalaan or lahat ng kapamahalaan. So God actually put him as the tagapamahalang pangkalahatan. Somebody took it away. Who is the God that will not be angry at you? That's why there is some sort of reprimand, isn't it? We saw it. The entire household was affected by it. Why? Because God gave that power to his begotten son. And somebody took it away from the, his son and take it upon himself and tell the people that he is that. He is the tagapamahalang pangkalahatan or the executive minister or in equivalent in the Bible, you're the chief priest now the chief shepherd. That's sad. Beloved brethren, brothers and sisters, it is important to remember that 50% okay, of our understanding of God comes from our own personal investigation of the teachings we receive. Now, in lieu of this, God has an instruction written in Isaiah. Let us flash that on the screen. Isaiah 34, 16. It says, search Yahuwah's book, the Bible, and read it. And in another translation, search Yahuwah's book of living creatures and read what it says. See, beloved brethren, that's why we are posting those verses. And we are admonishing each and every one of you, read the Bible. Buy a Bible, always bring it with you, read it. We will be guiding you through it. We are not going to go overboard because we got a Bible. You're not going to explain everything there because there will be people who will be sent by God to guide us through it. The priests, the real ones. Always be reminded of that. But we must know the law. We must investigate it. Like the Bereans. When they listened to the Apostle Paul preaching, when the Apostle Paul was reading to them the gospel, the verses in the Holy Scriptures, they love listening to him, the Bereans. And every day or daily, they open the Scriptures. They read the Scriptures, trying to figure out, trying to find out, did Paul said the truth? Did Paul say the truth? Is it really the truth? Is it really what God wants? Let me check it. And then they believe when they found out, oh, that's what, what he preaches actually right here. And then they believe. But in the iglesia where we came from, when we were used to be, the iglesia that is being led by those, uh, you know, that big M last name, right? The thing there is that, have we investigated? Have we read the scriptures? Actually, they are actually telling us not to read the Bible, right? Not to read it. Why do you think they are forbidding us to read it? They're not saying, oh, it's forbidden. That's not part of the doctrine. Yes, but your action says it, right? When somebody goes to the uh, building, to that church, huh, bringing the Bible, everybody was looking. Oh, look at that. He became a Protestant now. <laughs> That's what they were doing in that religion. But remember this, search Yahuwah's book and read it. Search in Yahuwah's book of living creatures and read what it says. You see, there is somebody who said, no, I'm not allowed to read it because only the ministers are allowed to read it. Who told you that? They told you that. Those priests told you that. Those ministers told you that. But it's not God who told you that. This is what God is telling. Read it. Now, what is the importance of knowing and comprehending God's laws written in the scriptures? Romans 2. 12 to 16, this is what we can read. Those people who don't know about God's law will still be punished for what they do wrong. You don't know the law, you will still going to be punished. And the law will be used to judge everyone who knows what it says. We know that. God accepts those who obey his law, but not those who simply hear it. Not those who simply hear it. See, beloved brethren, there are lots of people. We were that, like, that kind of people before. 
We go to the church, we sit down, we listen to the preacher, read the Bible, make some question, read the verse, make some question, read the verse, make some suggestions, applications, and conclusion. And then we are sitting there and said, wow, I heard it. Oh, the Bible said, not, see, those who obey his law, but not those who simply hear it. Well, you cannot just hear it. The scriptures also says, read it too. Hear it, read it, read it, hear it. You see, some people naturally obey the law, com laws, com laws, commands, even though they don't have the law. This proves that the consent Conscience is like a law written in the human heart. Yeah, there is some, there is a law written in our heart. And it will show whether we are forgiven or condemned. When God appoints Yahushua the Christ to judge everyone's secret thoughts, just as my message says. Beloved brethren, what is the importance of knowing and comprehending God's laws? According to the scripture, individuals who are unaware of God's law will still face consequences for their wrongdoings. Additionally, the law will serve as a means of judgment for those who are familiar with its contents. It is crucial to understand the verse structure where rejected knowledge is paralleled to forgotten the law. This aligns with the context of the chapter's opening verse which highlights Israel's failure to recognize Yahuwah as their God, as written in Hosea chapter 4 and the verses 1. It's worth noting, beloved brethren, that the people didn't only lack knowledge, but they outright rejected it. Now what is important? A deeper understanding. A deeper understanding of the passage can be gained through a parallel the rejection of God's law by Israel resulted in God's rejecting them. You see what happened if you don't know the law? See what happened if you don't understand the law? That's why God is saying all the time before we study his word, pay attention to what I'm saying. Understand it. Because you who understands it will have life and health. You see? Forgetting God's laws led to him forgetting their future generations. You see, forgetting God's law. Now, sometimes, you know, you might be preaching a lot of things, but there is something that you have forgotten, that you have to introduce God to the people. You have to bring God to the people. You have to bring the Christ to the people instead of you bringing yourself to the people. See, the people now trusted only on you. Whatever you say, they do. Don't talk to your parents. Don't talk to your siblings. Don't talk to them. Don't welcome them. And they listen to you. You see that? And God said, forgetting my law will lead you to forgetting your future generation. You see that? Which would lead to the removal of his blessings from the nation. As a consequence of Israel's rejection and forgetfulness, they would face destruction. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, Hosea's message aligns with Moses' warning to the nation of Israel that disobedience would lead to God removing his blessings as is stated in Deuteronomy. Moses said that, told that to them. And in our time, it could also be applied. How come you don't know the law? How come you don't know that the millennial kingdom will happen here on earth? Because that preacher did not tell you that. He gave you an incomplete instructions. He gave you an incomplete mandates from God. And what happened? We don't know the consequences. We don't know the sequence actually of what's going to transpire. We don't know God's plan. Therefore, we don't know who really God is. And when we, when God introduced his name to us, they are even mocking it. And some, and probably many 
of those members of that religious organization, Iglesia de Cristo, are mocking that name because a preacher on their TV mocked the name. Instead of bringing God to the people, who are you bringing? I am one with whom? With whom are you one with? You're not one with God. For certain, you're one with that person. One with. I am one with him. Isn't it supposed to be we have to be one with God? And to be one with God, we have to be one with Yahushua the Christ? See? Now, what instructions did God give to the leader of his people regarding his words in ancient times? Listen to this. And this is what we can read. Now, it shall come about when he sits on the throne of his kingdom. He shall write for himself a copy of this law on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priest. And it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to fear and worship Yahuwah his God with awe, filled reverence and profound respect by carefully obeying, keeping foremost in his thoughts and actively doing all the words of this law and these statutes so that his heart will not be lifted up above his countrymen by a false sense of self-importance and self-reliance, and that he will not turn away, deviate from the commandment to the right or to the left. What in instruction did God give to the leader of his people regarding his words in ancient time? Write for himself a copy of this law and it shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life. The king that was placed was instructed to do exactly that. Write a copy of the law, right? And you shall read it all the days of, his, of your life. You know, somebody did something, put a Ten Commandment, right? It seems like every, that every commandment, first commandment, second, third, third fourth, fifth, up to the last commandment, it seems like, oh, it is to keep you uh, from being punished by God. It is to secure your salvation. You have to obey all of this law. But the last part of it, the 10th commandment, is about himself. So I imagine that. About himself. That's sad to say, but we have to say it. It's about himself. What does it say? Do not go against the administration. Who is the administration? First of all, administration is not a human being. Administration is actually a uh, system. It's a system of God. The administration of God is the system of administering from God. That's what makes sense. That is what is logical about it. Now, if you want to say about a person, it's supposed to be administrator, not administration. See? Administration is a system from God. But the last part of that commandment that he made, that's sad. You know, we are not, it doesn't mean we don't love the brother. We do love the brother. But that was the mistake. Remember what God is saying? Bring the people to, bring me to the people. Bring God to the people that you bringing yourself. You see? That's the sad part of it. But sometimes truth really hurts. That's the facts. That's the truth. That's what had happened. And what was the result? The demise of the entire household. That was the result. Why are we bringing this up? Not to hurt nobody. Not to be against anybody. But not to copy that. That's what God is saying. Don't do that. Moses warned that to the Israelites. But he himself failed to do some of those things too. You see, write for himself a copy. Read it all the days of your life. Why? So that he may learn to fear and worship Yahuwah his God. You see, with all filled reverence and profound respect by carefully obeying, keeping foremost in his thoughts and actively doing all the words of this law and these statutes. 
Now, what is the reason behind the persistence of religious leaders in studying the words of God? So that his heart, the Bible said, will not be lifted up above his countrymen. You cannot be above anybody. We are all equal. You see, that's why a preacher, a minister, whatever title you want to call yourself, but there is only one title for you and me if you're preaching the gospel, ambassadors for the Christ. Don't take the title of the Christ, executive minister or executive preacher or the head of the church or taga pamahalang pangkalaga. Don't take that. That's for the Christ, right? So that his heart will not be lifted above, up above his countrymen because if you take, taga pamahalang pangkalahatan ako, I am the executive minister. Well, you are above everybody now. You see? So the Bible clearly says, so that his heart will not be lifted up above his countrymen or about God's people by a false sense of self-importance. You see what it made your the, the followers of the Christ do? They declared you are the VVIP, the very, very important person. So imagine that. They declared you that. You are more important than the one who shed his blood for their sins, you see? And that he will not turn away or deviate from the commandments to the right or to the left. You deviate him. Have your parents respect your mother and your father. You don't do that no more. Now, isn't it appropriate for the leader to have thorough understanding of the law? After all, they should be the first to know. But because he broke the law, he told people, it's all right. I did it for God. And then those followers believe it. That is the sad part. We don't base our faith upon somebody else's. What we base our faith upon the character of God, not the character of a certain individual. That's a Yahushan way of life. So those who are listening to this homily, you want to be a Yahushan? Base your faith upon God's character. Love and faithfulness. That's God's character. And many more things. God has lots of attributes. Base our faith upon those attributes of God, Yahuwah. Now, in what manner did Yahushua, let's talk about it now, express disapproval of religious leaders who held different beliefs? Oh, let us listen. Here in Matthew 23, 1 to 8. Then Yahushua spoke to the people and to his followers. He said, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says. Now, before I continue, in this part of the verse that we have just read, that's verses 1 and 2, Yahushua spoke to the people and to his followers. So there were people and there were his followers. And what did he say? He said, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says. So he was telling you, don't listen to these people, you know, because they are Pharisees. Don't listen to these people, you know, because they are following the Mosaic law. And it is already my law, the Messianic law that you should follow and observe and listen to. Yahushua did not say that. He said, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says. Let us continue reading. So you should obey them. You see? Do everything they tell you to do. But their lives are not good examples for you to follow. See, that's now where we are going to is, okay, how am I going to do that? I have to follow them. I have to obey what they tell me to do. But I should not... Uh, the, follow them, but their lives are not good examples for me, for us. Let's continue reading. Why did Yahushua say that? They tell you to do things. They're telling you to do things, but they don't do those things themselves. Oh, that's the problem about these preachers of other faith. They tell you to do things, but they don't do things themselves. They make strict rules. Ah, is it familiar? Tontonin, tontonin, 
rules, 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 right? They have lots of that. You know what I'm talking about. They make strict rules that are hard for people to obey. Mm. The laws of God are not hard, but the rules are hard to obey. They try to force others to obey all their rules. See, they are trying to force people to obey all their rules. But they themselves will not try to follow any of those rules. Hmm. The only reason they do what they do is for other people to see them. Hmm. They make the little scripture boxes. They wear bigger and bigger. And they make the tassels on their prayer clothes long enough for people to notice them. These men love to have the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. Do they have the most important seats in the synagogue? While everybody is right there on the ground, he was a little bit elevated and he's in the middle and he got lots of securities who are also ministers. You know, they make little, yeah, that's what they were doing. They love for people to show respect to them in the marketplaces and to call them teacher. But you must not be called teacher. You are all equal as brothers and sisters. You have only one teacher. That's Yahushua. You see, this, this is the basis of Yahushan faith. That's why in the Iglesia de Yahushua, in the church of Yahushua, we are equal. We are all equal. You are not supposed to look the ministers higher than you are. No, we are equal to the eye level. It's the same. We are all the same followers of Yahusha. What we do is just to deliver to you God. That's the job of a priest or of a minister, of a preacher. Bring God to the people. So we bring God to you through Yahusha. We bring God to us, actually. It's not just to you. Bring I need God, too as a preacher, as a minister. Does this make sense, beloved brethren? See, we are not supposed to make many rules. The rules that we have are already written in the Bible. All we need to do is to follow those rules or those doctrines. We do not need to create anything anymore because it's all right there. See? What is an example of that? Gather together should we gather ourselves together? Yes. Are we gathering ourselves together? Yes. See? These are things. When we are attending a worship like this, we have to wear our holy array. Are we? That's the rule. You see? We don't need to write it down. It's already in the scriptures. Yahushua rebukes. Those priests, those preachers, those Pharisees for imposing strict rules that they themselves do not abide by. You see? Actually, they don't have a standard. Some will not be allowed. Some will be allowed. You see? Case in point. A husband and wife divorce. The husband married somebody. He was able to return to their religious group. And the wife that he married was able to. The wife was trying to return because she also got married, but she cannot return unless she will divorce the husband. What kind of a rule was that? That was hard to swallow. You see? See that? It applies, it doesn't apply to the husband, but it applies to the wife. That's case in point. I'm not going to mention. Which congregation that is, but some of you know. And if that, that woman is actually listening to this, she knows it's her. You know, our faith is founded on the doctrines found in the scriptures, which are believed to be the words of God. Those words are words of God rather than on rules. So our faith is based upon on God's words, not on rules. You see that? Yahushua had certain issues with the Pharisees and scribes, but it was not necessarily related to their intentions towards God. As per the given passage, there were two main criticisms that Yahushua had had. Firstly, 
they were not following the words of God that they taught to the people. Secondly, they were motivated to follow the law only to gain human favor and honor. Now in Matthew 15, Yahusha rebukes the Pharisees and scribes for prioritizing their oral traditions over the commandment to honor one's parents. This led them to break God's commandments while trying to follow it as recorded in that verse in Matthew 15, three to six, it says, he replied, and why do your traditions violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God's law is honor your father and mother. Anyone who reviles his parents must die. But you say, well, even if your parents are in need, you may give their support money to be to the church instead. And so by your man-made rule, you nullify the direct command of God to honor and care for your parents. You see that? Furthermore, the Pharisees were known by placing difficult burdens on their followers. As recorded in 24, 23 verse 4 of Matthew. They load you with impossible demands that they themselves don't even try to keep. Which was reminiscent of the teachings of Moses. The Mosaic law. In contrast, Yahusha presented himself as a law of Moses teacher with a unique teaching style. His interpretation of the law emphasized love, mercy, and justice, making his yoke easy and light, as recorded in chapter 11, 28 to 30 of Matthew 15. Come to me and I will give you rest, all of you who work so hard beneath the heavy yoke. Wear my yoke, for it fits perfectly, and let me teach you, for I am gentle and humble, and you shall find rest for your souls, for I give you only light burdens. You see, when Yahushua gives instructions, it's light, it's easy to follow, not hard. There will be no question for it no more. Why? Because, well, it's easy. And, and it has no double standard. Because if you do have a double standard, you don't have a standard. You see? That's why people coming from their worship of God, so-called, you know, they worship God. They will complain, oh, in the church is this, in the church is that. Oh, this ministers comes to my house and are telling me this, trying to tell me this, this is the rule, this is the law, this is the mandate. Well, that's sad. If that is the one that's going on in your religion. That's why. Base your faith not upon a ruler. Base your faith upon the words of God. Upon God's instructions. So on what else do Yahushans base their faith upon? Here. <coughs> First Corinthians 2, 4, 5. And my preaching was very plain. Now with a lot of oratory and human wisdom. But the Holy Spirit's power was in my words. Proving to those who heard them that the message was from God. You see, I did this because I wanted your faith to stand firmly upon God, not on man's great ideas. Or what else do Yahushans base their faith upon? Our faith rests on the strength of God and his ability to fulfill his promises, as is stated in 1 Corinthians 2 4 to 5. We have faith. In his power and in his actions. Beloved brethren, <coughs> the resurrection of Yahusha is the ultimate manifestation of God's incredible power. In the gospel, we witness God's power at work through Yahusha's ministry. As he healed, restored, and even raised people from the dead. Furthermore, the New Testament is replete with accounts of miracles, signs, and wonders performed by the Messiah's disciples. Our faith is firmly grounded in the power of God. See, not in a story made up by man. You know, in the church, they are trying to convince their members, the Iglesia, that the messenger of God actually brought back to life a little girl. Did we hear it from 
the messenger himself? Did he say that? All members of the Iglesia, have you heard Brother Felix Manalo say that? But there are people in our time that are trying to inject that into our minds that he was able to do that. That kind of miracle. There were only two that we know recorded in the Bible, Yahusha and Peter. They were able to bring back to life someone, you know. But in our time, somebody is trying to convince us, oh, somebody did that already. And it was not the person himself, but it's those who actually like believe in him. That's the sad part. Again, their faith now is being based on rhetoric of man, not on the wisdom of God, not on the power of God. Now, what is another foundation of our faith? Here, Hebrews 4, 3 and 1930 of John. Now we who have believed entered the rest just as God has said. When he had received the drink, Yahusha said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What is another foundation of our faith? Our faith is founded also on the completed work of the Christ. You see? That completed work made us children of God. It is effortless to believe in what has already been accomplished. Believing leads to receiving Yahushua proclaimed it is finished by voicing faith-filled words that affirm this statement. We enter into his rest and wholeheartedly believe. You know, you have truly believed, beloved brethren. We know that we have truly believed when we rest in his grace. Faith doesn't strive but flourishes in the completed work that has been done by the only one, Yahushua HaMashiach. When Yahushua declared it is finished, he was communicating to the people, to the Jewish community that there were, was no longer a necessity for sacrifices or temples. His work completed the ultimate purpose of their sacrificial system. You see? I hope, beloved brethren, we are learning something from all of these things that we are reading. That's why 50% coming from us, 50% will be on your side. You have to investigate again what we have just discussed today. Now, what instructions does Yahuwah or Yahusha give to Yahushans whose faith is founded on God's character, words, strength, and the completed works of himself or Yahusha the Christ? Let us read what the Apostle Paul said, 2 Corinthians 8, 11 to 13. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. Try to read it again and again and again. What instructions does Yahusha give to the Yahushans whose faith is founded on God's character, God's words, God's strength, and the completed work of the Christ himself? He said, finish the work. Finish the work. So Yahusha said, Father, it's finished. We have to finish the work. As a believer of Yahusha, what action should one do to be prepared for the day of the rapture? Philippians 1.6, it says, And so I am sure that God who began this good work in you will carry it on until it is finished on the day of the Christ Yahusha. As a believer of Yahusha, what action should one do to be prepared for the day of the rapture? So that we can finish the race, beloved brethren. We strongly believe that God does not abandon us after creating us. Instead, he brings about positive change where? in our lives, which he will ultimately complete. How? By having faith in Yahushua. 
and believing in him, we are made righteous before God and deemed worthy in his sight, beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. This righteousness leads to sanctification by God, which involves a process. What is a process? A process of transforming you and me, transforming us into the likeness of Yahushua. That's why he said, have that kind of mind, the mind of Yahushua. This process, beloved brethren, applies to all who have placed their trust in Yahushua and are considered to be his children. When Yahushua proclaimed, Father, it is finished, we can also say that we have finished our race with God. This is how we base our, where we base our faith upon. We base our faith upon God's character. We base our faith upon God's words written in the Holy Scriptures. We base our faith upon the strength of God. When he said, I will work. I shall work and you shall hinder it. I will give you the word. That is sharper, or that like a sword that is sharper than a double-edged sword. He did it. He gave it to us, beloved brethren. We are so fortunate knowing this, brothers and sisters in the faith. We base our faith upon the completed works of the Christ. We know that that completed works is what we are about to complete. But it is not hard because the Bible clearly stated unto us. The Apostle Paul said, I am sure that God who begun this work in you, in us, will carry it on until it is finished on the day of the Christ return. So, the day of the Christ for us is the day of rapture. And there will be obstacles along the way. They mock us. They laugh at us when we share the name of God to them. They mock us. They tell people that we are rebels. They tell people not to listen to us. But it is the opposite. What they were telling what they want to accomplish is actually diametrically, diametrically opposed to what is happening. They tell people not to listen. People listen more. They tell people don't believe their lies. People believe the truth. They find the truth. They tell that their people that we are, what we are saying is a lie just to ruin the reputation of their organization. More people are listening to it. We don't know who they are, but we know they are listening because we can see it in different social media using what we have just said. So people are listening. And to that leader who is trying to disrespect our God by introducing or bringing himself to the people instead of God. Remember what God did to his olden people. He said, you priest and the mother Israel, I will destroy you. He will destroy those who did that. God is so upset with that kind of an individual. When God is giving something, a special task to his favorite son, to his begotten son, he said, I'm giving you all the authority. I am giving you lahat ng kapamahalaan. And God was giving it to his begotten son. And you took it away, you're in big trouble. And those who supported you and believe that are in big trouble. So brethren, we're not scaring you. We're just telling you what once you want you to understand. Change your ways. Don't be stubborn. 
That's what we have already heard in our past worship services. Don't be stubborn. We must know what God wants. We must learn to know who God is. I remember there was one minister who says, God has a name, has many names, but he doesn't have a personal name. It sounds cool to hear. God has many names, but he has no personal name. And then people who are listening to that minister were saying, well, that's right. Or probably those who listen to him, he's starting to tell you, God's name has many meaning. I agree to that. God's name has many meaning, but he has one personal name and his personal name is Yahuwah. But that name Yahuwah has many meaning. One of which he is Ropeka. He is our healer. I am who I am. He is another meaning. He is a banner. He is your flag. He is your lead. That's another meaning of that name Yahuwah. There are lots of meaning for that name. But he got one personal name. I hope that minister will be hearing this too. And I don't know how you're going to correct that to your congregation. So may all of those who are listening to this homily figure it out. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, read again. It will be actually like posted on our website and on, uh, on Facebook, YouTube. It will be posted there. Try to figure it out. Learn it. Read. God said, you know, go to God's or Yahuwah's book. Read it. See, that's the instruction. May we all understand. Don't just listen. Read also. God bless us all. Let us all rise and we shall pray. Merciful Father, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to learn lots of things from you. Father, we will always base our faith upon you, upon your character, love, and faithfulness, and many characters that you have. We will base our faith upon your words because your words are true. You don't lie. Your words are true. And the words of your son comes from your word. And when we follow your begotten son, we will end up with you in the holy kingdom. Father, thank you. We are also basing our faith upon your strength. Your strength is enough for us to overcome many things, to overcome hindrances, to make sure that the problems that we are facing every day will not hinder us. They will not put us down, but it will give us strength to overcome all of those trials in our life. And we base our faith upon the completed work of your son, because when he said finished, we are included when we believe in him. It means that his blood purchases us from the sins that we have committed. That at this very moment, all we need to do is to keep ourselves in a place where you call people and place them so that they could attain that salvation on the first resurrection. Father, we will try our very best to do exactly that. That we will maintain our relationship with you inside the church that was purchased by, your, by you, by the blood of your begotten son. The one that has been prophesied. We will not deviate from your instructions. We will continue to uphold all of your commandments, whatever it takes. Although people will fuck us, hate us, but we will continue to share your words to them because we have now made our decision that we will never abandon what you have gifted us. Father, thank you for allowing us not to be part of those people who turn their backs from you, following those leaders. Thank you so much, Father. 
for giving us this opportunity, for renaming us, giving us the name, the only name for salvation, the name Yahushua. Thank you for giving us that name. And we will keep that name and share that name to many, as many people as we can. Bless everyone standing before you, everyone praying to you this morning, Father. Bless our families. Continue to guide us as we sojourn together in this world, that we may give honor and glory to your holy name. We firmly believe, Father, that you have granted our request. For all of this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. saving grace of our Lord and Savior Yahushua HaMashiach, the love of our Abba, Yahuwah, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us today and forever. Amen. And beloved brethren, glad you rem you remind us again, please share our faith to others and you can worship via Zoom at 403-356-689 or via Facebook Live. You can give your offerings by visiting churchofyahusha.org and donations or our donations to humanity can be uh, given to uh, ofirfa.com. You can also share our website, churchofyahusha.org. It contains the declaration of our faith that could, as we learn more, we will continue uh, to uh, post it on, on that link. And also you can uh, actually access this worship service via churchofyahusha.org. And so anytime you want to schedule your worship, you can actually do that. Our Bible studies will continue. It, it's about the declaration of our faith. And our program is 1,001 billion questions. And uh, we put a segment to that, that some of our brethren who were neglecting the Christo before, are now because they they are now willing to show their faces because you know they are no longer part of that religion they can share their experience in that religious organization growing up yahushan can be viewed via youtube and facebook that's for our children to learn about god that's important to teach our children about god as early as young age as they have. And first Timothy 2, 1 and 2. First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, and requests, and thanksgiving be offered to God for all people, for kings, and all others who are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceful life with all reverence toward God and with proper conduct. So beloved brethren, let us always include those things in our private prayers. This concludes our worship service. May we all have a very nice and good Sunday.